Italy is well known for a wide variety of things, its culture, food, wine and its ancient and fascinating architecture. One building in particular sticks out, the Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore, situated in the city of Florence. Standing at a miraculous 114 metres tall, this building is an art form that inspires architects, historians and tourists all across the globe, and has been doing for hundreds of years. But it's not the building itself that attracts such inspiration, it is the dome that sits on top of the cathedral, which was designed and constructed by a genius ahead of his time, Filippo Brunelleschi. Born in 1377, Filippo Brunelleschi was an architect, engineer and a pioneer of the early Renaissance period in Italy. Brunelleschi, like Leonardo da Vinci, originally trained as a goldsmith and in his earlier life began to study the science of motion. In 1418, the town fathers of Florence, the Opera del Fiore, addressed a problem that they had been ignoring for decades, the hole in the roof of the Santa Maria del Fiore. Their predecessors had originally begun building the church in 1296, and it was decided that the cathedral would be finished off with the largest cockpit in the world. The only problem with this decision was that nobody knew how this job would be done, and decades passed with no viable answers or ideas on how this dome was to be built. The fathers of Florence debated and quarrelled over the initial design of the dome, and came up with no solution until Neri de Fioravante, a medieval architect at the time, came up with the idea of a dome within a dome structure. Florence had finally taken its first step into solving the greatest architectural puzzle of the age, but despite this, they only had an idea of what they wanted it to look like, and after many decades of debate, the Opera del Fiore held a competition in 1418, offering 200 florins to anyone who could construct the dome following Neri's design. Filippo Brunelleschi jumped straight on this opportunity, and just two weeks into the competition he had begun constructing a brick model of the dome. It was the size of a small building, with 5,000 bricks used in its construction, and was described as a unique and peculiar design. It is believed its design was inspired by the Pantheon in Rome, built in 126 AD, and was notoriously known as the House of Devils due to its dome seeming to defy gravity, the only solution at the time that demons used supernatural powers to keep the roof from collapsing in on itself. To Filippo, the Pantheon would have been proof that a dome such as the Il Duomo's could be built. The fathers of Florence were intrigued by his revolutionary design and asked Brunelleschi about the blueprints, and to their surprise, Brunelleschi refused to share any information. This frustrated the opera so much that they referred to Filippo as an ass and a babbler, and did not trust him or believe that he could have built such a model. After all, this was his first architectural challenge he'd ever faced, and it didn't take much to make the opera doubt whether a goldsmith could take on the task at hand. But it wasn't the fact that Brunelleschi wasn't confident in his ideas, he was just very secretive. Like Leonardo da Vinci, who often wrote backwards so that only himself could understand his work, Brunelleschi would scribe his ideas and blueprints in cipher to avoid anybody plagiarising his creations. Instead of showing his work, Filippo issued a challenge, saying that the commission to build a dome should only be given to whoever could make an egg stand on its end without falling over. After many architects tried and failed, Filippo took an egg, whacked it on its end, and then placed it on a table where it stood upright. The other architects protested, telling the opera and Filippo that they could have done the same had they known that that was what Brunelleschi was going to do. Brunelleschi had impressed the opera del Fiore, and when the final models were judged in December of 1418, Filippo's dome was chosen as the winner. Before work could begin, sandstone beams that weighed a thousand pounds each had to be transported up more than 140 feet in the air and set into place correctly, and at this time no man or machine could possibly do this successfully. Due to this, Brunelleschi designed two machines ahead of their time. The first machine was called the Oxoist. The Oxoist was able to raise 50 loads of sandstone per day, with the machine being powered by an ox rather than men to save time and money. The second, built in 1422-23, was named the Castello. A crane that permitted the installation of stone with far greater accuracy and control than any other. Throughout the earlier years of building the dome, Brunelleschi had gained respect from the city of Florence due to his inventions and intellect. Everything seemed to be going well for Brunelleschi, until the year of 1428. When constructing the dome, Brunelleschi held the entire octagonal structure together with nine horizontal rings, with each layer of the dome being supported by one ring. It is said that these rings reference Dante Alighieri's Nine Rings of Hell. Dante Alighieri was a 13th century Italian poet who was well known for his poem, The Divine Comedy. Within The Divine Comedy, Dante describes nine layers that descend down into the earth before reaching the depths of hell. Brunelleschi was fascinated by Dante's work and was said to have chosen to use nine rings in construction of the dome to refer to this. However, when the first of the nine rings were implemented in 1428, Brunelleschi's life was met with waves of bad luck. In 1428, Brunelleschi designed a boat to travel from Pisa to Florence carrying marble to be placed over the shell of the dome for decoration. 
Brunelleschi's ship, named Il Badalone, or the Monster, was described as a raft with 14 wheels that was tugged along by a boat. The raft crashed and never made it to Florence, costing the opera 100 tons of marble. Brunelleschi's reputation was tarnished yet again in 1430, when Florence were at war with the Duke of Milan. Brunelleschi produced a war strategy to create a dam connected to a river that would surround Lucca, an ancient city allied with the Duke of Milan, cutting the city off. However, Brunelleschi's dam was too weak, causing the water from the river to flood the entire of Florence's military camp, again ridiculing Brunelleschi. Other events included Brunelleschi being thrown into jail in 1434 over annual dues and Filippo's adopted son stealing money and jewels. In spite of this, Brunelleschi was still praised for his work on the dome, and in 1436 the dome had reached its required height and celebrations were held in the city. All that was left was for the dome to be tiled and for a lantern structure to be built on top. Sadly, Brunelleschi passed away on April the 15th, 1446 before the lantern was fitted. Regardless, Filippo Brunelleschi's achievements were phenomenal, proving himself as a genius and completely changing architecture for the better.